Hi, I'm Kai Burke and I am here for Press Recorder 9 at the 12th Night Theatre in Bowen Hills. We're just about to talk to James Brundle, country music superstar, and Dave Larkin from Gun Street Girls. Let's go see what happened. Mm. We got asked, we said yes. <laughs> so, we like bizarre ideas, and it was, you know, for all of us, a little sort of out of our comfort zones. Yeah. We thought we'd give it a try, being, you know, the uh, daredeviling types we are. <laughs> The other thing too is that they're all very real reasons. The other yeah. thing is that there was an opportunity to play all these songs that as, as an evolving musician when you start, you know, you hear about all this stuff. Mm. And you never really get around to playing it because you listen to it and you watch the movies and you, you know, you hear the history of the, of the artist, but actually having an excuse to stand on the stage with you much and play some of the definitive rock and roll songs mm. and some of the definitive country songs of all time is just like, yes, fantastic. One, two, one, two, three. Records. So, like Beatles, if you look at a lot of the early Beatles records, you'll see Perkins in the credits because mm -hmm. he wrote a lot of those songs. And you know, George Harrison was a huge Beatle. Mm -hmm. uh, George Harrison from the Beatles was a huge Carl Perkins fan. Yeah. And um, obviously, those guys, you know, only got together because of guys like Elvis and pretty much everything that came out of Sun Studio. So, um, it's the source for a lot of great music that yeah, you know, exactly. not just us, you know, we got into, but a lot of anything sort of good in rock and roll sort of roots itself back somewhere to Memphis and somewhere to these songs, you know. The, other, the, the great point of your question is, you know, as an influence, and I'm one step removed from these actual artists because big influences in my work were Chris, Chris Christopherson, Willie Nelson, probably those two guys more than anybody else uh, of that real country background. Mm -hmm. But then bands like Little Feet and Allman mm -hmm. Brothers who had, you know, the song Sweet Home Alabama, that yeah. real southern sound. A lot of a lot of the muscle Mouse shoals, yes, yeah, <laughs> fantastic, you know? yeah. and a lot of um, a lot of that muscle shoals music and a lot of the, the stacks R and B stuff, which is all that big a divide between that sort of formative white rock and roll that Jerry Lee was playing, but came from a New Orleans background that had a whole lot of black stuff going on in the background. Um, uh, Carl Perkins, who was a southern boy, you know, they they. They sure grew up on grits and, and had farm backgrounds, but they were influenced by a lot of uh, 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 African-American spiritual music, which gave them their R&B bit. And, you know, it's, it's, really, it's a big uh, polyglot kind of crucible that this period of time we're talking about. And the further you get into it, the more you can see where it led over the next 30, 40 years. Well, that's what we can't explain to you. You can't. There's no point in having <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, we're, all, we're all collectively telling a story of the yeah. day, but it's not just a story of the day, it's a story, it opens up a whole lot of conversation about, you know, artists getting together, like, um, like such stature back then, in a place where, as uh, James was saying, where there were um, photos of Rufus Thompson on the wall and B.B. King, Hal and Wolf. I mean, we're mm -hmm. talking about some of the, uh, we're talking about, you know, the pantheon of rock and roll yeah. here. Um, in, in, and if you go to Memphis, and um, if you've been to Sun Studio, it's tiny, it's mm. not much bigger than this space up mm. here. It's a yeah. very it's very small, it's like a milk bar with a room out the back with so mics mm. and it's quite phenomenal what came out of there and what what, what a talent scout he was. So um, And he did it all himself. He did you know, it all he did, himself. He didn't, he didn't go and <clears throat> find an act and go to his producer, I think, you know, do some of this one. He'd find the act, say you're coming to my studio mm -hmm. and he'd sit there recording it, you know. He threw cash out of his studio the first time because Sam's name started to become synonymous with Good music. Yeah. Johnny Cash wanted to record with him, and Cash walked in there and said, "I want to record with you." And, and Sam said, "Play something." And Johnny didn't. Sam said, "I don't like what you're doing. Yeah. Go away and come back with something better." Yeah. It was all gospel. Pretty hard market. Um, and not that he didn't like gospel, but there was a lot of gospel, yes. and he wanted something that was, you know. Go away! How's that? Yeah, that's it? right. Yeah. Just come back. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of my favourites, my best comment from not actually the artist and repertoire guy, but his secretary, mm. or secretary, you know, the chick who She's was, not there yeah, anymore. That's right, came into the studio and listened to what we're doing and said, your music's not as bad as it used to be. Mm. <laughs> I thought that was a pretty good line. I, thought that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was happy with that. Thanks, Chris. That's, that's cool. normally the other way around. That's right. It's normally like, oh, you don't often hear like a new stuff better than yours. That's right, yeah. Exactly.
Yeah. Oh, the kids of today, James. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. You and Nick knew each other. Well, we knew each other socially, you know, yeah. um, but we, we weren't, you know, drinking buddies or anything. And I, I don't know. I was familiar with James's work. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> and Ezra Lee, I didn't know either. I had no idea who he was. I just <laughs> heard about Ezra Lee. And, um, you know, and I, so I guess that's, for me, that was like, oh, how's this going to work? Mm. You know, because I thought, you know, was Tex busy or something? Yeah. How, how, Couldn't why get the good asking, guys. Why, why, why are they asking me? So, um, but when we got together and had our first hit, and, um, session, jam yeah, session. Yeah, we good. just kept coming. It's great. It's like, oh, great. We're going to do this show where we're playing all these great songs, and, uh, you know, you get that funny feeling when you play a cool old song like that. And, uh, uh, I'm drifting off the top of you a little bit, but you t- you, you, well, do you want to change it? But, 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 but the, the, the point is with all this is that it was four unlikely guys in the day, and mm-hmm. it was four unlikely guys with us getting together, and it's kind of a little stroke of genius from yeah, Simon so. and the gang just to do that, and it's kind of it's kind of worked in that in that sense. So I if they would have all walked in doing the same thing, what the hell is happening? Exactly. Everything's alright.